Hello and welcome to CNC Designs. This is Michelle. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in New Zealand and I'm bringing you another global monthly video hop along with other demonstrators around the world. So if you look at the description below this video you will see links to um, several other videos um, for the global monthly video hop and this month's theme is only for men. So I've chosen to use the handsomely suited uh, suited, handsomely suited uh, stamp set along with the matching suit and tie dies to make a card and show you a special technique with this card. So I will be um, in the description have links to all the items being used in this um, video which were current at the time of filming. There is a new catalog that starts May 4th, 2021 so some products may be um, going then I do believe that this suite of products will still be in the upcoming catalog. So I've um, done this little card here and um, I've done it with a, a special effect um, coloring on white embossing powder with my Stampin' Blends and this is using all the um, stamps uh, as well as the Buffalo Check uh, large background stamp. You can use any large background stamp you want to get um, this effect, um, but I've chosen the Buffalo Check to uh, make it look like a um, plaid suit. And this time I'm going to change up some of the colors um, when I show you how to make this card. And so this one I've made for Father's Day. Here in New Zealand, Father's Day isn't until September, but I know other parts of the world that's coming up in June. So this would make a very good Father's Day card for anyone um, for this year and you can change up the colors. You could just leave the background plain. Uh, this set does lend itself very nicely to doing um, a plain shirt and I'll show you um, one of those at the end of the video as well as some other samples using this technique. So let's get started. So for this card, I'm as I said, I'm changing up the colors. So I'm using the shaded spruce background and this time around I'm going to have the card open this direction. So the um, dies for this you can do it to open either direction you want, um, landscape or portrait. Um, so shaded spruce base, so any size um, card base for the country that you're in. This is just half of an A4 piece of cardstock cut lengthwise and then scored in the center. Then you need a piece or two for the suit. So I've taken um, what's left over with my cardstock uh, to use for the next technique. It's best if you have it a bit larger than your background stamp so you're able to get all the image on the whole thing. If it's, um, if it's too large you won't get the whole image and if it's, if it's too small you'll have difficulty holding it when you emboss the powder on it. So this is larger than I need. So extra space there. Then I've got a piece of um, basic white cardstock for the inside of the card. So again, whatever country you're in, just slightly smaller than the inside um, dimensions so you can see the color around the edge. So one piece of basic white for that. Then another piece of basic white for the um, inside of the shirt. You could go with a different color if you want to um, give a color to the shirt on the inside. It doesn't have to be exactly the same size as the um, outside jacket. It just has to be big enough to fit between the V on the opening. So I think I made this 9 centimeters across and about um, 13 and a half centimeters long just so it can be hidden underneath there. And then you also need a bit of scrap basic white um, for the collar and if you wish to do um, the button buttoning on the center there. Depends on what kind of shirt you have in the background. So just another piece of whisper white for that or if you're doing a different card for the sh uh, color for the shirt, whatever color you have there. And um, some extra scrap um, for the lapel and if you choose to have a pocket as well as any inks. Um, I embossed uh, that in white. I think I will be stamping um, this one uh, instead of embossing it and whatever color you want for the inside. So let's get started. Because the um, background stamp 
is so large, the Buffalo Check stamp is so large, I'm using my Stamparatus. Now, if you don't have a Stamparatus, um, you could just put this stamp straight on the table. I suggest put it on a glass table um, so it won't slip around You and ink it up there and then you can place your um, paper right over the top and then rub it from this side if um, you don't have a large enough block. We do sell the large blocks that fit these um, large stamps uh, and that size block is an F size block. I don't know if you can see there's an F there. So you can get an F block for that. I just find the Stamparatus is better because um, I can um, give it good pressure and I could re-ink and re-stamp if, if necessary. However, for this, because I'm doing it with um, Versamark, you're not really going to see where the image has stamped because it'll be see-through. Um, but you will see it when I push the embossing powder on it. So put the piece in that you're going to use to emboss for your jacket. Now I'm just going to eyeball about where I want that to go. Using grid paper in the background is a good idea because you can line it up. So I'm going to line it up on that um, line there. And I've made my own little cardboard template around the edges because you can't get good pressure right up to the edges. That way I um, have the stamp further field. Okay, so now that I have that prepared, I'm going to ink that up with my burst mark. And I will be putting white powder on it when I'm done. So just getting everything ready in the side there. When you ink up on your Stamparatus, it's always best, no matter what ink you're using, to have um, something underneath it to take the pressure when you're pushing on to the Stamparatus. Um, so I've put the case. So the stamp case is plenty to have underneath it while you're inking it up. So you want to give it good ink pressure on here because you want this to stick well. And it's clear. It's just a sticky clear um, ink that will pick up the powder. And because it is clear and, and I can't see it on here, I'm just giving it good pressure. I just noticed it picked up some lint. Um, to make sure that I cover all the areas because I won't be able to see it. Normally if you um, stamp with your Stamparatus in a color, you can then see where you've missed and then just re-ink that section. Okay, sorry about the wobbling. When you are using Versamark, if you hold the stamp at an angle, you can see the shininess to see where you have actually inked and where you haven't. So making sure your card is in place, your card stock, push it over. And I like to give good pressure just by rubbing on the back of it. Because it's such a big stamp, you can't always tell if you've got all the spots. Again, I apologize for the wobbling camera. Okay, so the other thing with Versamark is the paper sticks to it. Oh, that time it fell off. Now you can sort of see a bit of image there. That's because um, it's, the, it's like putting water on your cardstock. Now that I've got that inked up while it's still sticky before it dries, I'm going to put the powder on. So with this technique I'm showing you, I kind of call it the faux um, Jacob's, Jacob's coat, or um, that's the colorful Technicolor coat. You may have heard of that technique. This way gives you a similar effect, but you don't have to um, do it get as messy with my technique as you do with that other one. So this is just white embossing powder and just give it nice generous I start at one end nice and generous make sure you've got paper or something under it to catch the powder and then just let it slide down 
all the edges. And I tip it over and give it a couple taps to get any excess off. Okay. And that came out a bit messy. I'm not sure why I've got all those areas there, but you can always bring the brush in and clean that up. So I will clean that up and I will heat emboss this section and I will come back and show you how it looks. So when I heat emboss this, all those sections are gonna turn out white. Okay. Okay, so I've heat embossed it, um, cleaned it up as best I could. There are a few patches that didn't come out, but that's okay. It's a handmade card. So this is bigger than I actually need for my card. But now the next step is to color it in. So this one here, I chose um, three colors to use and I just um, uh, stepped them up. So I had um, Poppy Parade, uh, Mango Melody, and I believe Daffodil Delight, and then I just switched them up. This card to make it simpler and um, to match a suit that I saw on um, line. I looked for pictures of plaid suits to get the idea. I'm simply going to color this one with um, my dark Cajun craze um, uh, Stampin' Blends. And so this is all going to have one color with the plaid, but then you've got the dark um, mossy meadow in the background. So the best way to do that is to um, use the fine tip if I was doing this on a really dark background, like black or early espresso, I would simply um, just use the brush tip and just brush all over it because you wouldn't really see it coming through. Um, I'm just going to move that out of the way. And so just rub straight over where, the, um, in, where it's embossed. And I'm using the fine tip trying not to get too much outline outside the lines but because I want this to go the whole thing the whole way I can do all sides but just to show you how I'm doing this so see there so because this is a darker color it will show up on the green so I'm going to try to color it as neatly as possible but if your background is much darker than the color you're using then you can be a bit messy it won't be as noticeable so um, I will color this in because it'll be boring for you to watch me color it all but basically, just when you're on the embossed part, you can go as quickly as you want. But when you're going on the edges, just be a bit more careful. Try to have maybe a straight line on the edges. And so that is going to give me my um, effect that I'm going for. Now, if you start coloring and you find you don't like the color, you can usually color over it with blends. So this is the light Cajun craze. I just want to see how that looks in comparison. So see that's the light and I can actually color over a bit of that dark and it kind of blends it off. But that's lighter than the effect I want it to get. So I can come back with my dark and even though I've just colored that section light, I can just color right over it with the dark and it will take away the previous color, which is a nice thing. But the blends are alcohol-based pens, which means that they will um, be permanent. And you don't actually have to wait very long for them to become permanent. Let's test that theory. So I've already colored that edge. And I'm not getting any ink on my finger. Not getting any ink on there so it, it permanently sticks and then you can color over more if you want a darker color you can just keep coloring over um, the same color to give it more depth so I'm gonna color this all in and then I'm gonna show you how to make the uh, card so I'll be right back okay so I've finished coloring it all in there you go now if you want it darker you could just go over um, with the same color um, if you want it different colors as I um, said in my original one you simply just color the squares um, different colors. So I'm going to um, cut this to fit our card. Now, because um, 
I didn't get stamped right on that edge. I'm going to trim this down, just those straight edges there, and get it to the right um, height. So for the front of the card, you want it just slightly smaller than the front of your card. So in this case, I'm going to do it at 10 and a half cross and about 14.3 um, centimeters long, um, which inches that would be about four and a half inches long by about, I mean, sorry, five, five and a half inches long by four inches wide um, to before I cut that section. So let me see if I'll be able to do that here. So before I cut to size, I'm just going to trim off that little extra green so I have plaid showing everywhere because the back of the card is going to be green so I'm just going to trim off a little bit of that and then let me cut it to size there's my other trimmer and another tip if your blades are um, getting old and starting to dull um, just put a piece of paper, just any paper, um, behind them as you cut them and you won't get the fraying effect. Um, so I just have a strip of paper there and so I want this to be 14.3 centimeters so that's about five and just more than five and three-fourths. And just have a piece of scrap paper under where the cutting blade goes. That's just going to trim off just that little bit there. Okay, now that didn't take off quite enough because, see, this the stamp didn't go all the way, so I'm going to trim that little bit off and this little edge off as well. But so with that paper there, it's caused it not to fray, even though my blade is a bit old and probably needs replacing. So I'll come back in with my chopper just to clean it up before I die cut it. Just trim off that little edge. The other thing too, sometimes when you stamp the background stamp, it doesn't go straight. Um, so sometimes I have that problem. And just trim that off slightly. There we go. So now, this piece is all done. And now I need to cut my V. So that'll be the shirt. So this is where you can decide which part you want. See how that um, didn't cover as much there. So if I cut here, um, I get rid of that one and these are covered better. Um, when you use this piece, it doesn't go right up to the top of the metal. It's slightly short. See how it's slightly short, the cutting section. So when you cut, don't put it further down, don't put the metal right to there because then you won't cut that very top bit. So slide it up slightly and you can even turn it over to check to see if the met, um, that little groove is there. And you could measure it out, I just kind of eyeball it because the shirt could be offset on the card. So I will cut that. Now the other thing is if you when you cut that, my original card here, I decided to go with the bow tie. And there's two bow tie shapes in this set um, because they actually match the bow ties in the stamps. So you can um, stamp and cut those bow ties. I think this is more of a bow for um, a woman, these stamp images. But you could have two different size bow ties. And if you want to put a bow tie on your um, project, you can just line it up and cut all that out because you're not going to use that inside V there so you can use that scrap piece to do a bow tie so whether you do that one or that one um, but this card that I'm making today I'm going to try to make it more sophisticated so we're going to go with a solid color um, tie I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to go with the green or the orange color but I'm going to cut this section out and then the other things that you need are your lapels you uh, cut those out in a solid color, or if you had stamped more and colored more, you could cut out a section of that. Um, so this piece here isn't big enough for me to do the lapels, so I'll have to get another scrap piece um, to cut. Uh, the lapels come as one piece, so they're connected at the bottom. Or if you are using scrap pieces, you could cut 
one lapel and then um, set it down separately because it's very thin attachment there. The other thing I will need to go die cut and I'll do it while I'm uh, here is that's for the neck. So the little white part for the neck, I'll go and die cut that. And then I will die cut a strip um, for the middle. Oh no, I won't die cut a strip rather for the middle section because I'm going to do a tie on here and you won't be able to see that anyway. Um, I'll decide whether I want to have buttons on the front um, later on. And the pocket, I can use my spare piece of green to cut the pocket out as well while I'm at it. So I'll go do all the die cuts and come back and we'll put it together. Okay, so I've done the die cutting and so when I cut this, I cut that one far enough up and that one's a little short. But that's okay, don't panic. Get your snips out and just trim that off. Just trim it straight off. And so that is not needed for the card, but as I said, you could use that to do the bow tie or even buttons if you want um, to do something decorative that way. So I'll put that aside. And so this was the die to cut um, the collar. So it gives the effect of the collar. And again, those pieces are just barely held together. If they come apart, that's fine. Just glue, stick them down in the um, area that you should. And the same with the lapels. See, they come together right there at the end, but if you don't have big enough scrap paper, you could just cut it from strips, the two sides, and just have them together. So those are the three pieces, three dies that I used. Now, I need the pocket as well. And before I do the pocket, and I also need the um, tie, but I thought I would try uh, do my stamping first. So this was the scrap piece I used for um, cutting the lapel. You can see that. So I've got that section there that I can stamp on. And I'm going to do the world's um, greatest dad. And this time I'm just going to stamp it with the Cajun Craze because those are the two colors I'm using, Cajun Craze and Shaded Spruce. And on my previous ones, I did the stamped and embossed after I'd, I'd die cut it. And you can see I didn't stamp very straight. <laughs> so tip to people, stamp first before you die cut the um, pocket because you can line up the die to do it straight. So I will do that here, my Cajun Craze. I always turn my um, stamps up over and look at them in at an angle to make sure they're nice and inked up before I stamp with the red rubber stamps because you can't see through them. And then just having a look at where I'm going to stamp, knowing that I have to have this shape so if I look there and I see okay that shape will fit approximately there for the die cutting then I will just put my words right about there straight down good pressure straight up now that didn't come out very dark so I don't quite like that so I'm going to turn it over because there's always two sides to every card and this time, I think I will go ahead and stamp on my trusty old Memento Black ink. Before I do that, I will clean my stamp. So that's why you should always stamp first before you stick things down in case you um, need to change your plan. So let's try this again. This time, I'm just checking where, roughly where I want it to be stamped. So I know the die will fit the area I'm going to stamp. Okay, and let's try this again and see if it comes out better in black. Probably because the Cajun craze is just not dark enough on the mossy meadow. And that came out better. All right, I could emboss it, um, which is what I did on my original card. Um, but for video purposes, I'm just going to stamp it and die cut it. So that's going to die cut it over that section there. Now the other thing I thought I would try, we'll see how it comes out. I'm going to do the tie in the um, Cajun Craze, but I wanted to try one of these stamps because I have not tried one of the tie stamps yet. 
So again, that's one of the things you should stamp before you die cut it. So let me give it a go. I thought this one here might be the best one to use. So let me just get that ready. And so just want it to be far enough down that I can fit it onto that piece. So this is one of those that would be really good to use with a stamparatus in case it doesn't um, stamp very well. You can have a second go at it. So let me get my mossy meadow out. Oh, sorry, not mossy meadow. Sorry if I mentioned mossy meadow earlier. It's shaded spruce. Not mossy meadow. The green is shaded spruce. So just inking everything up and moving along the stamp. Checking that it's all inked up. And then just straight down. Nice even pressure all around. Sometimes I just move my fingers to put pressure in the center if it's a big stamp. This would be a good one to use with the Stamparatus. Oh, that looks quite good. So it doesn't really look green on the Cajun Craze um, because it's so dark, but it makes it show up much better. So it doesn't quite look green, but it looks quite good. So that might look good behind there. I'm not sure. If I don't like it, I can always turn it over. <laughs> um, that's a nice thing with the tie being symmetrical. So I'll go ahead and die cut that. And if I don't like the looks, I'll use the opposite side. Okay, so there is the tie cut out. And if I decide I don't like the looks of that, I can turn it over and have that side of the tie. Um, and I've also already taken, there's a little die, looks like that. I've um, die cut that piece because if I choose to use this side, you can stick it on there and it just gives it a bit of depth. So it makes it look like um, the actual knot. So I have that ready to go. And the other things I need to die cut um, as I put the card together, if I decide, um, there's little buttons. So you can do six little buttons. Really cute. You can do them all in one go. So I haven't decided whether I want buttons yet. And the pocket, I've cut that out. Here it is there. Nice stitched pocket. And there's this little die here that cuts out a piece that you can stick over the top of the pocket if you want. Um, I haven't decided whether I want to go with that or I might cut um, a section out of here so I can have the same look to it like I did for this one here. I had the matching piece on the pocket. So let's start putting it together. So we got our base and the inside. Now I'm going to turn this into a birthday card because uh, Father's Day here isn't until September. So I have plenty of time to do um, Father's Day ones. So you got birthday, thank you, just to great dad, you're the best. Could be in, for anyone. So I've already got my birthday one here. And because everything else is going to be green, I'm going to do my Cajun craze and stamp first. Because as we already experienced, um, you stamp first before you... Uh, before you glue down in case um, you don't like the look of it then you have two sides so there we go happy birthday to you yep typical I always do things crooked I was just thinking might be a bit silly thinking of maybe doing the bow tie and then the happy birthday on top of that. And if I do that, I will use the other colors. Nice thing about having paper is you can always trial things out with the paper. So I'm going to head, head and cleaning my um, stamp because I'm thinking that this one would look better in the light. So if I were to do the bow tie, let's just practice that in the light and then in the Cajun craze and then I could do my 
birthday right over the top in the darker green. Yeah, so see how it's got the dark words, which are smeared, showing up nicely on top of the tie. So I think I'll do that. Where's my card go? So that's crooked. So we're going to go for this other one. So I'm going to do the bow tie in the Cajun craze, or the ribbon, whatever this image is. I'm going to pretend it's a bow tie right there. And then we're going to do the happy birthday in the darker shaded spruce right over the top. Even if it's crooked, it kind of looks like it was meant to be. There we go. So that's the inside of my card. Sometimes make things up as you go. I just like to do different cards. I do a sample card so I know what I'm going to do for the video beforehand. And then I like to change it up a bit because that way you can, you'll have two ways that you can do things. Um, when I change it up, I still make sure I let you know how I made the original card. So you could do each one, either one. Sometimes I just make the original card that I show you. So now, I cleaned all that up. I'm going to stick that on the inside. Just some tear and tape is fine. don't have to put a lot to hold it down. I just do strip on either side. And then to make sure it goes straight, I do my tab method because I hate putting things in crooked and then not being able to fix them. So the tab method is you pull up one area, make a tab sticking out, pull up the opposite area, make a tab sticking out. If I had tape everywhere, I would tab each piece. So now the only sticky part are those two corners. So open up your card, put it down inside, and just looking over the top of it, you just try to make sure that there's enough um, space around it. Now this is the only sticky area and that's the only sticky area. So right now I could move it around because I haven't pushed down where it's sticky. So I can line it up, make sure that looks right push down on the sticky part and then just pull the tab gently up and it makes it nice and straight. Pull the tab gently up. That's the tab method. I learned that about 15 years ago and it's fabulous. So that way, even though I can't stamp straight, I can stick cardstock down straight. So hopefully you learned something. Now, where's our, where's our other way? So for the rest of it, what I suggest is <coughs> because the bow tie actually usually sits under there, it doesn't sit on top. You might see them with it on top, but that's not how a bow tie, not bow tie, that's not how a tie normally sits. It normally sits underneath. So what I do to line this up is I put some dimensionals on the back and I will use the mini dimensionals for this. Keeping in mind, you don't want to put them too close to this corner here because you're going to be slipping the tie under it later on, okay? So, a couple dimensionals on the corners. These are the mini dimensionals. And then I'm going to stick that onto the white cardstock. Now remember this piece is slightly smaller um, than the size that we used on the inside and it's small enough that it fits. So whoop, the length on that it doesn't have to be all the way down to the bottom and all the way to the sides but it has to be long enough to cover that section there. So roughly in the center there if you want to get pedantic you can use um, your grid paper but you want to roughly in the center of the white, as far up to the top as you can, stick your lapels. So I just put them down gently so I can line that up. And so now I can decide whether I like that look. 
and I can blue that down. Or if I like that look. So let's put that on top and decide. Do I like the plain Cajun craze? Or do I like the stamped eye? Pocket on there. I think I'll put the lapels on before I decide. So I'll glue all these little bits together. So if you're gluing something small onto another piece, it's easier to actually glue um, where you want the small piece to go instead of gluing the small piece because then when you pick it up, you get glue all over your fingers. So I glued where I want it to go and then I'm just going to stick it over the top. So that just covers up that top stitched area, gives it a bit of dimension. Turn your lapels over and glue them. You don't need a lot of glue, but just to try to get a little down the bottom. I use the tip of my Tombow to help push glue to the areas I want it to be. And just in those corners. Now, if you got too much glue there, and again, if it's difficult to pick it up, what you can do is turn the piece you want to put it on, and then just gently set it down, and then when you turn it over, you can wiggle it into place. So you want that just up to the top on both sides, covering up your little V down the bottom. And then you can check on the other side. You can see where it's lined up or where it hasn't lined up. And wiggle it into place. So this section I do recommend, highly recommend you use liquid glue so you can wiggle it into place. So now having that, I can decide whether I like that both that tie like that or if I should go with the solid tie. I think I like the solid tie. Makes it more sophisticated. So with the solid tie, I want to make sure I glue that little section on that gives it a bit of depth. So going with the solid tie, I will glue this on. Again, just to pop piece over where you want it to go. So you may think that seems a bit silly, just gluing the same color on there. But when you look at it, see, it gives it a bit of depth. So it does look like there's something else there. And then I'm just going to glue right up and slide that just up so it tucks under the collar and try to make it straight. I haven't pushed it down yet because when I do, um, I just want to check that it looks like it's straight. So I can move it over slightly. Okay. And then I can push it down. Now the next thing would be to attach these pieces together. See, it still looks crooked. I don't know how I managed to do that. Now that tie looks a bit better. Obviously, I don't wear ties, otherwise I know how to put that together. Okay, so here I'm just going to put a bit of glue around the edge. And keep in mind, I don't have the cardstock isn't as wide as the whole thing or as deep, so. I want to go too far to the edges. And stick that again, line up the top. I just want it to have about an even amount on both sides of my collar. Yeah, I think that looks much better with a solid tie. 
checking you've got your card opening the correct way. Yeah, I could put some depth on there and put some height, but I think I'll just put it down flat. Again, you could use double-sided tape for this if you wanted. Um, but I will just put some liquid glue on here just to make it thicker. Yeah, turn that over. And have a nice even green around the edges. Now, I had thought about doing this just on a white card base, and the white card base would be the actual shirt, but the thing is, you'd have to put this all the way up the top and wouldn't have an even area around the edge, so it depends on how you want it to go together. Now, I'm thinking that's a bit light there, but um, I might put it here because this side's a bit bigger. And so I'll pop the pocket up with some dimensionals. Just a couple will do. Give your pocket a bit of height. And then not sure how high a pocket is supposed to go, but I think that looks good. Now, I haven't decided whether I want to put any buttons down there or not, because you could put a few buttons there. Um, if I did, I think I have to do them in green so they would stand out. So I will just go, with my scrap here, I'm just going to cut some of these buttons. You do six at a time, but I definitely won't need six. So I'll just do some buttons and we'll see how it looks. Okay, so there we go. I've got some green buttons. Have a quick look and see if it. Yeah, I think it probably helps to take away some of that uh, color. So I'm going to do three buttons. So again, put your glue where you want them to go. You could use glue dots for this. Two and three. So I'm using my pick a tool to pick them up right way and just pop them in where you want them to go. This set has so many cute things. You could use the buttons for other projects. You could um, you know, just do background stamping. You could use the pockets for other things. I'm going to um, do a women's uh, lady sweater, I think, with the similar technique in the traditional style. So there we go. We've got three little buttons. Okay. I probably need to redo that color there. But anyway, there's your card. So to one of the world's greatest dads, a happy birthday to you. So that's the card for the global monthly video hop. The theme this month was for men. And so that's the other style using the bow tie and the buttons going down there. And so that one stands out better because it embossed it. That's a Father's Day one and here's a birthday one opening that way. So again, that's using the handsomely suited um, stamp set along with the lovely um, suit and tie dies. Those are in the current catalog and carrying over to the new one. And just to show you um, with this technique, which I call, you know, I just color, coloring um, with your blends. So we've got our Cajun Craze blends, and I did not use, but um, the other color we used was the shaded spruce. But coloring, this is coloring on your white embossing powder with your um, stamping blends. And um, I call it the faux um, Jacobs coat. Um, from the, um, if you look up the Jacob's coat um, style or the many um, color coat style online, you'll see something similar to that. But this is an easier way of doing it. And um, to just to show you, so there's a mini card I did the same way. So again, I stamped everything with white emboss uh, and heat embossed it with white embossing powder and colored it with the blends. 
And so you can do, that was a little sample one I did, so that's a mini card to fit in our three by three inch little envelopes. So there's lots of things that you can do with that design. And this is one of the coats I did. Now this is doing the uh, traditional method um, with the many colors and then you color over, you clear emboss it. You color your white card stock, lots of colors, clear emboss it, and then color over it all with the black. Um, and it gives you that effect. So this is a different way of doing it. This one was white embossing, that's clear embossing. And so there's another card I did. And then this is one of the ways that you can use this set as well. So um, another demonstrator, um, Heather did this one. Um, and so this opens up two different ways. And this one's been shown a few times online as well, so you should be able to find a video for that. So I hope you enjoyed that. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. And make sure you subscribe to see more videos. And next month um, there will be another global monthly video hop, but I put other videos on throughout the month. So if you don't want to wait that long, um, you just subscribe and you'll be notified when I have a new video coming up. If you um, are in New Zealand and would like to buy products um, and do not already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, you can go to my website at michellecritchley.stampinup.net and you can also go to my blog, papercraftaddiction.blogspot.co.nz. I will be showing lots of um, other projects and ideas um, as well as I'll be putting photos of these projects up there as well so you can have a close-up look at them. I'll also list um, below this all the product codes for these as well as the name of the other demonstrators. You should go along and have a look at their videos to see what they've come up for men only this month. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.